Hello and welcome to the third part of this LEGO tutorial series. This is Mark Labar at BlenderPassion.com and we're going to be showing you how to rig and do a little bit of texturing in this. So here's our figure as is from the second part of the tutorial. And what I want to do is I just want to make sure that, well, that the textures are mapped correctly and everything's fine with the UVs. So it does seem that everything's quite alright. If we hit Alt-Z, we can go into the material view, and we can see that the textures are mapped on correctly. So I'll go to the Cycles Render Engine, and then we can just go ahead and go over to the Material Panel, and I'm just going to go ahead and check the rest of these. So not all of the textures are in one single image, so that's something we need to keep in mind. And we will be able to see them in the Blender Render Engine, because that's how the default textures and materials are set up for the Blender Render Engine. So we'll have to do quite a bit of manual work to get them into cycles. So if we wanted to do this, wanted to map these out by hand, well, it's going to be tough because this model isn't exactly optimized for that sort of thing. It's pretty bad topology, but for our purposes, that it's fine, and it's already mapped, so we don't have to worry about any of that. My workflow usually consists of the texturing before the rigging, just in case anything, I need to add anything. So we'll need to go ahead and add in an armature, a single bone. We're going to check x-ray and axes. And I'll just name this the root bone. So there are tons of different ways to do this. This is just my own little way of doing things. Just adopt it to your own style. Whatever you need to do, whatever you need to accomplish, depending on the model, depending on what you're trying to do, and how, well, how good a rig you actually need. For this sort of thing, you may not even actually need a rig, but it will help out just a little bit, and may be worthwhile in the future. So I'll go ahead and extrude that all the way up, and then we're going to just subdivide it right there. And the way reason why we're just subdividing it is because, well, if we keep on extruding it, then the axes might get out of place. But we want to keep them with the x-axis facing this way, where he's going to bend, for example, like that. He'll bend this way, so we want the x-axis in that direction, or at least that way like that, so he's bending on the x-axis. So after that, I'm just going to go ahead and rename some of these, and that'll be Torso. Naming conventions are always helpful from time to time. And we're going to work on some symmetry things, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up the T menu by hitting T, toolbar, and enabling X-axis mirror. So if we add in a new bone with Shift-A, we can, I'll just name this upper arm dot R. I'll shift D duplicate it. And I'll name this upper arm dot L. And then what we can do there is we, if we drag it around, we see that we're moving both of them. So I'll go ahead and pick the right one for the right arm. And I'll just position these accordingly. And we want this to be right in the socket here where it's going to pivot on. So about right there, we can mess around with that later. And control numpad 3 to get in the back side view. And we'll just position that at the elbow. I probably won't have it moving on the elbow. We'll need a lot more geometry to actually get any smooth, smooth transitions there. So I'll just leave it like that though. And we're probably not going to mess around with this forearm bone. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude it, and all the way to the wrist, and then I'll just subdivide it and position it accordingly. So I'll stick that right in the wrist socket, and this right at the end of the fingers, or whatever kind of plastic claw that may be.
So the x-axis rolls look pretty decent. We probably could make them a little better. Control R to rotate it, the roll that is, and get the x-axis in the correct position. So after that, we'll just go ahead and name this forearm.r and correspondingly forearm.l. And I'll name this hand.r and we'll have this as hand.l. So we'll go ahead and shift D duplicate that and we'll just create the leg bones. So we just want, well, we'll need a whole lot more topology, well, vertices here and loop cuts, but actually we can't even add any loop cuts because the topology is so very bad, but it's pretty decent enough for considering there are all these holes in the mesh, so it is decent topology, other than the sides and edges not being connected together, but that's alright. We'll just go ahead and position these somewhere around here where they're going to be hinging on and rotating on. So somewhere in the middle of that large thigh circle. About right here. And I'll just make the roll negative 180 degrees and position it accordingly. And we'll just go ahead and drag that right down. Can't really move the feet either individually because there just isn't enough, not enough mesh there to move. So we'll go ahead and select those thigh bones and we'll just select our root bone here and press control P and keep offset to parent them. And we'll do the same with these and make sure the last bone selected is the parent bone and there we go now if we move this well it'll make more sense in pose mode because if we move so one of the root bones we'll move all the other bones which is what we want so I'll go ahead and I'll just select all of these different objects that our mesh is made out of and make sure they're all selected by moving it around a bit and after that, we can just go ahead and create a group, Control G, and I'll just name that Minifigure. So now that we have our objects grouped together, we can just go ahead and select our armature last, those bones there, in object mode. And then what we can do is Control P, set parent to with automatic weights. And we'll just see how how this looks. And select our object and we press Control Tab or go into weight paint mode from this menu. Then we'll we can just start weight painting. So it looks like it didn't actually pick up the right bones. So we'll go into pose mode and things are looking really really ugly here. Because well, mesh topology is quite honestly very bad but we can work around that eventually so it'll just take a bit of extra work but at least we don't have to model the whole thing and everything is to scale and nice and well so I'll change the curve on this and I'll just go ahead and start painting press Z to go into wireframe mode paint a bit more here and it's going to Make sure that we get all of the vertices here. So if we just move that, we'll see a few other things, but that's not part of the hair. If it is part of the hair, we'll just, well, we'll weight paint it. Make it all red so that this head bone controls all of the hair. So then what we need to do is, well, we press Alt-R to reset its rotation. So I usually do that after finishing that. So then we're going into the head, and we just want to make sure that all of it is weight painted. All of it has one entire weight. And we'll move it, and make sure we get the rest of these vertices. 
and it's looking pretty good right now. I'm not going to go through all of this because we'd be here for <laughs> quite some time. You'd rather not see me do all that. So we'll go ahead into the torso bone and the actual torso mesh and we'll go ahead select all that. Make sure nothing's missing. There's one little spot. Got it. Alright, I'll go back to zero weight, and I do want to... Well, that's actually... That's not weight, that's actually strength I was moving there with shift F. Never mind that. I'll set the strength back to a value of 1. Weight to zero, strength to one, there we go. Because I do not want the torso bone to be moving this little top neck piece here. We'll leave that for the head. And it is orange, so I just make sure that it's all in red. And there we go. So it's moving quite nicely. There are a few little wonky parts, but we'll fix that in time. That looks very painful as I rotate his torso around. So we'll go ahead and, and just make sure we didn't mix, miss anything. Doesn't look like we did, so we'll go on to the upper arm. And what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and start to... We'll deselect some stuff. I don't want any of that being moved by the upper arm bone, only the torso bone. I believe I have everything. Go on to the forearm. Very tedious process, but if you want a good model, if you want a good rig, then it's necessary. Of course, there are ways to quicken up the workflow, but this is just for the basics here. So we'll get into this, and we'll just select all of this. I won't bother separating it from the forearm bone, because, well, you're not going to get very good results anyway. Ugh, that looks really ugly very bad topology but we'll work around it after this tutorial is finished everything will be working quite nicely with the rig so we'll make sure that nothing else is controlling our arm other than the arm bones and here's the part of the tutorial where well we just go through a time lapse I don't know how else to narrate this other than I'm making some vertices blue and other vertices red. So, we'll just continue on here painting all these things, working on every single bone, and going ahead and moving them, rotating them, and just making sure that everything is in good working order. And now you may notice some certain little artifacts here and there when you move a bone and other parts of the mesh don't move with it, and that's mostly because of, well, it's all because of bad topology. But in this case, that can be easily remedied by just going ahead and selecting the bone and corresponding object, and just going ahead and, under weight tools, under the toolbar, we can just hit normalize all. And that will fix our little artifacts and weird things happening, as long as, of course, we have all of it weight painted correctly then we will we'll, then we'll be able to get some good results so again with this mesh because it has bad topology you're going to have to go through every single bone and make sure that no bone is influencing any parts of another object that it shouldn't be the arm shouldn't be controlling certain vertices of the head because that just wouldn't make much sense especially in this context.
So I will go ahead and go into edit mode here and parent these two bones together, selecting the root bone last. So everything, now everything moves with each other, which is exactly what we want. And if we rotate the torso, you can see that, well, it's not working out as ideally as we want it to. So we'll just go ahead and move this right down here, about where the thigh bones are. And now we can see if we rotate it, it looks much better, like a little Lego figure should. And we can improve it upon it a bit by moving it down right into the center of that circle, as well as the, the thigh bones here. So I'll test that out again. Everything works quite nicely. And we're just going to go ahead and fix our arm. So it's not rotating correctly. So we just need to move it around a bit and see what happens. See if we can get it rotating correctly on his torso. So maybe you might want to try moving the roll around control R, seeing if that does anything. Just want to see how that looks on a decent pivot point. Just bring the roll down or up a bit more. And if we hit control tab, we'll go into pose mode. R double tap X and we'll just try to move this around and it's still not rotating as well as we want it to. So I'll keep playing on with this and you can just watch this troubleshooting part here. You will have to excuse me though. I just got back from the Philippines a few few days ago, 40 hour long trip and still suffering from jet lag just woke up at 3 a.m it's about 4 a.m right now i'm running on a glass of water so i just decided to start making tutorials so here i am trying to figure out why this this shoulder joint doesn't work correctly so another thing we could do is try moving the pivot point which is probably what i should have tried first but i'm doing it right now and I'm just going to try different areas of the mesh and see what happens. So that just made it worse, as you can see. And I'll try it again, see where it's moving, see how I can fix that. Maybe a different roll would help. So we'll try that again. But that roll apparently did not offset that any bit. So. We'll just change the roll a bit again. Try to get it aligned with the angle of the torso. Actually, I probably don't even want to be copying what I'm doing right now. I'm just playing around. I'm actually recording the audio after the video. So this is going to be a bit of playing around. So just sit back, have something to eat maybe, just watch me play around with this. And I'll just go ahead and try to keep changing the roll, try to keep changing the pivot position. This is a really interesting angle here. I'm really used to, well most models should be in a decent T-pose, but that's kind of hard with a Lego figure. But anyway, I'll just have a nice sip of water here wipe the sleep from my eyes so here we go we're going to try different pivot positions and just trying to see which which works best and then go on getting from there and that looks that looks pretty bad so we'll probably need to move it a little further away from that 
even if I rotate it on different angles and axes. Well, Legos don't move like that. So I'll just go ahead and move it over here about where we were before. See what the change was. Try to get out of weight paint mode. And we'll just try to move this around. Getting better. We'll go ahead and move it over even more. Try to get it in the middle of that that shoulder meat right there. That's looking better. Not ideal yet, but that can be worked upon. So here we go. Now that is looking much better. Just a little bit to fix in the back there. And then we'll we'll be pretty darn good after that. So I'll just bring it down, bring it over a bit, see what happens then. Still a bit off, but it is looking much better. See if that did anything, and that just made it quite a bit worse. So we were in the right area somewhere over here. And that, right there, that's looking pretty good. Now he can swing his arms around nice and happily. So this concludes the rigging part of the tutorial series. Please like, subscribe, comment, and thank you for watching.